So Tim, welcome to the stage. Uh, thank you. And congratulations on your knighthood as well. I think last time I yes, saw you, you, thank you, you had yeah. not been knighted. So thank congratulations. You. So we've seen this formal complaint, a white paper from the US carriers directed to the, the governments, uh, particularly of the, the UAE and mm. uh, Qatar. Uh, they stress not directed to the airlines, but talking about the way the, the airlines here operates, Emirates, uh, Qatar, uh, and Etihad, and make allegations running to pages and pages uh, on subsidy, in their eyes, uh, unfairness of business practices. As I think I've said on two occasions, I use the words flim flam and tosh because right. in my view that's exactly what it is. Having read this report and uh, realizing that you could drive a bulldozer through just about everything they wrote about us, um, we will respond in a very robust manner. We have grown this business from, when I first came in 1985, from nothing to 235, 40 aircraft today and have created an airline that is probably one of the largest, most successful in aviation, civil aviation history. And we have done that without state intervention, without state funding. We have no shareholder funding at all. So I'm really interested to see how it is that from a competitive point of view, when we're serving multiple points in the Indian Ocean, Africa, and all the places that you know we serve, um, that they can claim that we are doing them damage. They often cite that their joint venture partners are affected by market share. Hey ho guys, market share is not a right. Market share is earned. And if the quality of our business and our product and the value proposition is a better one, and we can connect people from all the points that they don't serve, that their joint ventures partners do in a very roundabout manner, then why would you deprive the passengers, the consumer base, the right to do that. When I first came to Dubai, and what it is today, I mean, that in itself is probably the most profound thing in the airline's history and existence, is this the place. The link with Dubai. Uh, unbelievable. I've never seen a city of any kind of entity like this come out of nothing to what it is today. So, you know, that has shaped, it has driven, it has affected, everything that we have done and I guess if Dubai had been like it was in 1985 or when I first came here in 1975 what would the airline look like it wouldn't be as big um, it would have a business model that was not dissimilar to what we have today but the element of local business would be far far smaller you know the way we're going to look at this show and look at the people are coming from all over the world to get to this show what will happen with Expo 2020 when we bring in 17 million people in a six month period to come here. That's all about what this place is. And it's underpinned our business model. It's underpinned everything we've done. So when I look back and I think, my God, where did that come from? I still drive down the Sheikh Zayed Road twice a day looking at the Burj Khalifa and said, this is the most spectacular thing I have ever seen in my life. And I re remain in awe of what goes on and what's to come.